so beautiful being here at Scam Out. You know, Scam Out is one of the best gigs, you know, in Britain. For me, it is. It's a great festival. Fantastic. Love it. Yeah, everybody's so into the music here, aren't they? Oh, everybody. I mean, from... You, 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 you just have to walk through around the place and see everybody. There's all smiles. You don't see one person with a sad face. Everybody's happy, enjoying themselves to the max. I love that. I love that. What are you going to be performing tonight? A lot of your great hits. Yes, yes. Uh, well, you know, in, with my show, I always try and remember my peers. You know, uh, some of my friends, you know, I, I do a few of their songs and I do a lot of mine. You know, I'll, I'll be doing um, maybe one or two UB40 songs because the, to me, you know, they're one of the best groups in England. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not, not just good musicians. They're fantastic people, really great guys. So, you know, I'll be doing a, a couple of theirs. They'll go down really well. And sometimes they're a bit underrated, really, in reggae music. Because if you look into UB40, they've actually got the most records sold. Sold, of course, of course, of course, of yeah. course. Because they're a damn good group. You know, they're a great group. You know, a great bunch of guys, you know. And if, if you ever go to one of your shows, it's like being here. You know, 100% enjoyment. Yeah. You know, and that's what, that's what you want to spend your money on. You go out to enjoy yourself. You know, and that's what they give you. Yeah, I went to a UB40 gig years ago at Kew Gardens outside. Okay, okay, okay. And I interviewed Ali after, no, before the gig. Right. And it was really funny. I didn't have a drink or anything, and I was like, um, I've got to be professional. <laughs> and as soon as I turned up, he was like, Do you want a Guinness? <laughs> <laughs> well, the the, the uh the, the you know they they split the group, yeah. And the guys I'm working with um is is uh, Ali, not Ali, um Robin, you know, and his side of the group. And believe me, they put on a fantastic show. Mm. You know, everything about them is really professional. You know, so I love it. I love it. You know, and I I don't know if you know the story, but because of them, I bought my first home. You know, from my first royalty statement from them. Oh wow! What, you know, what song was that? Then? Uh, Mr. Fix It. Mr. Fix It. Yes, when they recorded Mr. Fix so It. They did a cover of it, and you got the. Yes, yes, yes. The right. the first payment I got was twenty seven thousand pounds, nice. and I just paid that down. Well, not me, my wife <laughs> took the money and paid it, paid that down onto you know a property that we were actually living in, you know, and um. The next payment I got from them, I just paid off the, the, the mortgage. That's a great yeah, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Like so I have to pay homage to them every time, you know, yeah. and say, thank you, guys. You were the ones who put me on the road to success. Yeah. And out of all the songs you've recorded, there's so many. I mean, what's your favorite? What are some of your favorites? Well, uh, I was listening to a, 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 um, a remaster of uh, a, a track I did I wrote years ago called love me today not tomorrow that my son revamped you know um, and because he asked me to re-record it and I did and when I heard it I thought this is really a wonderful track so I I'm in love with that I'm also in love with Mr. Fix It because Mr. Fix It have given me more financial st uh, stability you know um, I made quite a lot of money from Mr. Fix It you know and um, and it, it has been recorded by so many people, you know, by Beres Ammon, you know, Beres Ammon did a, uh, a track called, um, what's the name of the track? But he did a track and he used Mr. Fix it, the, the intro. Oh, okay, yeah. And because of him using the intro, I get so much royalties from that, you know. But John Holt has recorded it. It has been recorded at least 60, 70 times, mm. you know. It's funny how these things happen though, isn't it? Because... Last time I first spoke, uh, spoke to Stranger Cole, you know. Okay, yes, yes, singer, yes. Yeah. And he said he did a hit in the 60s. Right. And they used it in a car commercial and then similar to you. Yeah. I was able to buy my house with it. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, Barry Salmon recorded Let Them Talk and he used the, the, the intro. And it's amazing the amount of funds you get from that, you know. So yeah, that that song in particular, Mister Fix It, have given me so much, you know, financial, you know, you know, gain, you know. So I'm 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 in love with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, there are loads of other songs that you know I I, I really love that I've done, you know. And um, talking about the old ones, the new ones are, are, are is what really happening for me now because um I did a, a, an album with. Uh, a guy called AJ Franklin. He was a member of the the, the Chosen Few, and th that is a winner. It's a, one of the biggest albums around. So um, 
that is really getting a lot a lot of play my son also um is a producer lee francis he's produced a lot of different people um like he, he did a track with uh, a girl a chinese girl called tasan chin who won the voice in america he um produced a couple of tracks with her and they're big really big so you know i'm working with him and he's produced quite a few tracks with me and over the moon with them what was that one you did a few years ago oh i can't remember the name of it now it was really good it was a collaboration oh i'm an israelite that's it yes yes that. yes 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 fantastic but I, I don't know how we put that together but the band is it, it sounds like a huge orchestra you know but it, it's fantastic and funny enough i wrote that song in 1980 because my mom i got a phone call that my mom was ill in jamaica and i went down to jamaica and spent some time with her and while i was there you know i i, I was friendly with a, a lot of dreads you know and uh, some of the guys took me up you know to the camps in in Warwick hill and while i was up there they were t this guy was telling me about you know the the, the israelites from ethiopia you know and the the, the journeys that they, they, they made and all that and from that i penned the song you know i'm an israelite so when i when uh, my son put the, the rhythm track together and you know we decided we're going to record it you know you got freddie mcgregor luciano yeah. and taurus riley and myself to record the track and what a yeah, track that is <laughs> beautiful beautiful absolutely beautiful well, i got a lot of good replies from playing that song Everybody oh yeah oh like, yes wow, there's like a, there's a a song from the past you know yes you know, great reggae yes 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 it's a fantastic track and uh, you know on the continent it's big yeah. you know a lot of people really goes into that track how many years ago was that now it's probably quite a few now oh it? it's about uh it's, it was before the pandemic yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> thank god those days are over <laughs> Hell, oh yeah 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 but everything that, that they, you you talk about now is either before the pandemic or after the pandemic so the pandemic is up <laughs> yes yes and who are some of your influences yourself uh so many people have influenced me you know you know um one of my favorite um artists uh, you know when i was growing up was like sam cook you know nat king cole you know um louis armstrong you know um yeah because you have a very soulful voice don't you it's reggae but it's kind of you know, well good, yeah. good good for you to say it not me <laughs> but I, I i love frank sinatra mm. you know i, I well you, you know there's so many great artists that you know I, I listen to and when you listen to them they, they do something in particular that you love you say oh I, lo I love to do something like that so you just try different things until you know you you, you own your own thing and you know here i am today so it's good to have a broad <clears throat> palette oh yes oh yes fantastic it, it is it is it is great to have you know a big variety and a, a big scope that you can pick and choose because anywhere i go and anyone says will you could you do this i'm ready you know i've got it whether it's soul music you know calypso whatever you know i'm in there so do you remember when you did your first recording yeah i think so yeah yes yes i the first recording i did um i did it with um it wasn't actually uh uh, uh in a studio as such the guys had the tape recorder set up and, and everything and i recorded and uh it was um a guy who was doing a lot of productions and you know when i heard the song i it blew my mind you know because i didn't know i could do actually do this you know but my first uh, actual rec professional recordings was actually with coxon coxon dodd yeah and uh i used to tour with with, with uh, carlos malcolm and his afro jamaican rhythms which is a big band in jamaica and we were doing um the, the, the doing all, all the, the islands in the west indies you know and then we went to america you know we went to the bahamas and uh you know um after we came back to jamaica you know um i, I I decided I was going to spend some time there and I wanted to get involved in the recordings because I wasn't recording then. And a very, very good friend of mine that I went to school with in kindergartens, um, his name was Jackie Estick. And if you look at the, uh, the, the Cox and uh, Dodd albums, he is the guy who wrote, who, who wrote most of the, the liner notes, you know. And um, when I got back to Jamaica, you know, I saw him and I says, so what's happening musically in Jamaica, Jackie? And he says, well, 
you know, if you want to do some good music, the best recording studio you can deal with is Studio One. And he took me to Studio One, introduced me to Mr. Dodd, and from there, you know, it just blossomed. You know, and I've, I've, I've recorded, you know, exclusive for Mr. Dodd because he was such a nice guy. You know, a really, really, really nice guy who would help you in every way, you know, he could. But that might be finances as a father figure. You know, he would tell you the things, what not to do or what to do. You know, so I just stuck with him, you know, and recorded with him. And I, I remember the night when I recorded uh, Mr. Fix-It, or the, the night when I heard Mr. Fix-It after we recorded it, you know, he turned to me and he says, Winston, this song is going to follow for the rest of your life. And it has. You know, that's the kind of song you want, isn't it? Right, right, <laughs> right. And I'll be singing that tonight. <laughs> yeah. And um, how different is it now when you record a song from when it was back then? Was it more of a live performance back then? It was, it was, it was, it was. Because you, you have to understand that the, the, the band that, that was uh, recording with you, they were being paid per track, you know, not uh, uh, for a session, you know. So, whether you made a mistake or not is, you know, after you, the song is finished, is next, you know, because <laughs> they want, you know, the, the, the money, yeah. right? So every, every recording you did, it was a live performance, you know, and it was great. It was great because there, there was no editing and yeah. all this jazz, you know, what you hear on, on, on record, that's exactly what was sung in the studio. Today, you know, a guy can make a track and every word is an edit, you know, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm not taking liberties and I, I'm, I'm not knocking the, the, the style of recordings that has been happening. But I've seen guys record a track and when you, you bring them on stage, they can't sing it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's completely foreign to them, you know. But in the old days, you had to sing direct, you know. And that's today, I find that a, a lot of people when they come to see a, a concert that the older guys do, they enjoy it more. Because the, the guys are giving them everything they got, you know, just like the old days, you know, no, no, no digital fix up and, you know, it's straight up, you know, yeah. what you hear is what it was. That's great. Well, so I enjoy that. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for joining us, Winston. And we're really looking forward to your gig tonight. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much, Chris. Totally enjoyed it. And I do hope you're going to spend some more checks tonight. I already did. I already did. <laughs> um, saucy Horde, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. other side of that. The, the, um, um, uh, it's really uh, funny. You gave me a call and I played it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. The break. Um, is it the break? I can't remember now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the break. A, it's a green record. Yes, 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 it, yes. It, yes. it went down well because it, it had a sort of a retro vibe in the background and you're, you're singing over it. Right, it right, really right, 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 right. Well, thanks, Chris. Thanks a million, man. No problem. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Nice to see you again. You too. Cheers.